to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're giving honor to God and Jesus Christ, who is the head of our lives. Amen. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. We thank God for everything that is going on and everything that is getting ready to happen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. And hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you have put around us, Father God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Father. How you magnify us, Father God. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for everything that you have done and everything that you're getting ready to do. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For those who are watching us on Facebook, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank God for you all. Amen. Just bear with us. Amen. As we have... Uh, had a little technical difficulty, but things are always all right when it comes to the word of God. Amen. For those that are on the line with us today, amen. Glory to God. Whether you are on Facebook, whether you're on Zoom or you're the conference line, there's always more than one way to do some things. Amen. Glory to God. It might not be as much as we are like it to be. Amen. And glory to God. It might not be the way we desired it to be. Amen. But it's going to be the way it is because the word of God cannot be stopped. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, hallelujah. I don't know about everybody else. Glory to God. I just know about what God is doing. Amen. Glory to God. And I thank God for, for, for us doing it in every way possible. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we magnify your name and we glorify who you are. We exalt your name on high. Hallelujah. We know that you alone are worthy of all the honor and all the praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. And for those that are there, we are asking right now that you will take the opportunity. And we're going to turn this over to the woman of God who's going to bring forth our announcements this morning. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. Good day, good day, good day. What a wonderful day the Lord has made, and we will be glad in it. We had a wonderful time. We welcome everyone to Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries. Bienvenidos, todo el mundo, a Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries. La Iglesia Oficial Sin Paredes, the official church without walls. Feeding your faith and doubt will start. We welcome everyone of all languages to come and join and listen to the word of God for the people of God. We have Monday Bible study at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We also have Tuesdays and Thursday prayer at 7 p.m. And every other Wednesday, we are reading a wonderful, fantastic book. The author is Pat George A. Walker, and her book is Cruising on Desperation, a gospel comedy that it is wonderful. In fact, I'm on my third reading. And for more information and the times to get together, the pollen must be high today. We thanking God for all of it. Uh, we're also wanting you to know to go to our website at www.wordofthelamb.org. And there you can find all of our services. And come on out to forget about Friday. Friday Encouraging Word, where many times we have guest speakers and Bible trivia is so much fun. You never know what's going to happen on Friday Encouraging Word, but you're always guaranteed a good time in God. So come on out. Don't be a part of I should have been there. And this previous Saturday, that was yesterday, and every first Saturday of the month, we have first group prayer between the hours of noon and 1 p.m. And Sunday, you guessed it, right here, live on Facebook, glitches, text, issues, and all, we will be here because the word of God will move forward and take territory for the kingdom. Right here at Sunday, message at 11 a.m., live on Facebook and on Zoom and across other social media platforms. Pastor Brian, our beloved pastor, bringing you the word of God for the people of God. We also have a women's and men ministry. We welcome you again to go to our website. And at this time, we'd like to wish everyone who has a birthday in the month of May a very happy birthday. Also, we would like to continue to invite 
everyone across the globe to our prayer, Unity Prayer, Monday through Friday. It is 6 a.m., 12 noon, and 6 p.m. And we are praying for a global community. So come on out and join us. And also, we would like to let everyone know and give you a warm thank you from all of us at Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries. A warm thank you for your generous giving. You can find our text to give at the bottom of the screen. You can also find a donate button on our webpage at the bottom of the first landing page and on Facebook. And we thank you because your tax deductible donation goes to actually spread the gospel in all different forms of these communications. So we thank you and we embrace you in Jesus name. And if you would like to give the old fashioned way, which we all embrace as well, you can do so at PO Box 320391, Hartford, Connecticut 06132. That is again, 320391, Hartford, Connecticut. 06132. Gracias y bienvenidos a todo el mundo. Hoy estamos trayendo la palabra de Dios con nuestro pastor, Pastor Brian. Pueden ver todos los servicios en nuestra página www.word.org. Ahí pueden ver todos nuestros servicios de la semana. Y ven a las 10 de la mañana en donde estamos dando culto para los niños, nuestras ovejitas más pequeñas. Y todos los domingos estamos aquí para las 10 de la mañana para el estudio de los niños de nuestras ovejitas más pequeñas. Y a las 11 de la mañana aquí y en vivo en Facebook y Zoom. El culto general los domingos. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Y si quieren dar generosamente, les invitamos que hay un botón ahí de text to give y también en nuestra página, nuestra página de donación. Gracias por estar con nosotros y recibir, vamos a recibir la palabra de Dios que es cambiante y que gloria sea su nombre en el nombre de Jesús. Les damos Muchas gracias a todos y gracias por estar con nosotros. Bienvenidos. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. We turn this over to the man of God who will be expounding on the word of God for the people of God for such a time as this. We thank you all for joining us. Pastor Brian. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For all those that are on the line, amen. Glory to God. Uh, good morning, Brother Eli. Amen. Glory to God. I God bless you and your family. God bless you, Sister Miller. Amen. Glory to God. And as I say, no matter what, when Sister Miller's on, I know I can go and preach. Amen. Glory to God. I thank God for my evangelist, evangelist lady, sunshine, evangelist outlaw, and evangelist hooks. Amen. Glory to God. And to the deacon and deaconesses, amen, glory to God. I, I bless you and our first lady, amen, glory to God. God bless you too, amen, glory to God. We're going to muddle through today, amen, glory to God. I know that I got a word for you, amen, and um, it's also first Sunday, amen, so glory to God. Let's be with us on that as well, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. But I got a word for you today, amen, and, and God has been so good, amen, that he's just been blessing us in all ways possible. He has strengthened us in every area. He has covered us in areas, Father, even when we didn't think we could recover, he has come and, be, and, and done some things. He, is, he has been our shield and our buckler. He has been my helping hand. He has been that one footprint in the sand. He has been everything that I need and everything that I will need and everything that I'm going to need. Amen. Glory to God. And I want to give honor to God and Jesus Christ, who is the head of our life, uh, to the, to each and every one of the axioms, meaning Christians, to all the apostles and bishops and pastors out there. Amen. Glory to God all over the world. Amen. Glory to God. May God continue to bless upon you as well. Lord, I'm, I'm asking you that I decrease, that you increase, Father God. Hallelujah. Mm, glory to your name, Father. That you will deep that you will increase your word, Father God, in us, Father. 
For Father, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Hmm. Ah, God, I ask you right now, God, that you overflow upon us. I ask you that you touch in every way possible, Father. I open my mouth, Father God, and I ask you to fill it. Lord, I ask you to have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word of God is, is, is living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It will pierce the divide of the joint and the marrow of the soul and the spirit. Amen. Glory to God. And I feel good this morning. Amen. Glory to God. And I enjoyed our, 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 our the children's church service. Amen. And it does my heart good to just be able to, to hear them and have them expound and share. Amen. And Amen. Uh, I enjoy them. Amen. Cause it's, you know, it's all about them and, and, and it's, it's just listening and getting their opinions. Amen. And it makes your day sometimes just to, to hear the things that, that come out because it makes you understand of how wonderful God really is. Amen. Glory to God that we can see some things sometimes and he gives us a glimpse and as I call it a little bit of a blessing that we're able to see and hear through the eyes of a child. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. I got a question for you today and I got some words for you today, but I'm going to give you my title for today. My title for today is what is the big deal? Amen. What is the big deal? I sat here and I uh, was listening to some things the other day and, you know, that came to my mind. What is the big deal? Glory to God. I wanted to know what what what's the problem what's the what's the issue what might be the problems in some things you know i was just pondering these questions because sometimes you do you know you ponder some stuff and as i got there i started to think about some stuff and and and, and the lord was kept leading me into some certain places that i didn't believe i i was going to be at but i'm i'm there amen glory to god if you would um Amen. Glory to God. I'm going uh, to uh, ask you as, as we start to continue on that you would turn your, your Bibles. I hope each and every one of you has brought your sword with you. And for those who don't know what the sword is, the sword is the word of God. Amen. Bring your sword with you at all times. Amen. You got Bible. You got a, a, a apps on your phone. You can bring your sword with you. I want you to take it and I want you to go to Acts the fourth chapter, and I want you to just the, the first verse, and I just want you to park it right there. And I'm going to get to there in a little bit. We're going to spend some time there. We're going to spend some time in John 1 today. Amen. Glory to God. Have you ever heard this part of your, your uh, uh, things that's going on, y'all, where uh, individuals are um, talking to you and... Uh, you get a, a opportunity to uh, see some stuff and you're listening to people and sometimes people got some things for you and they got questions, you know? And one of the questions I always heard while I was, I'm out there and I'm talking with people is why should I listen to you? You know, you try to expound and you try to, share with the, the people um, what's going on. You you uh, want to talk about the word of God and you're trying your best to just give them something to speak about, but yet they're still having some issues. Amen. Glory, glory to God. So, so now they, they got these issues going on. Amen. Glory to God. And you're saying to yourself, well, well, why you you want to listen to me? Now, these are words that I've heard a few times. 
I even had questions when somebody asked me, where is this God who lets all these bad things happen? Hard questions to answer. I had people tell me that they believe in something, but they don't believe in God. Have you heard this? Hmm? Or is this something you might want it to ask? Let's take it from a different point of view, y'all. Um, why should I listen to you? You might not hear it as much as you can almost see it in people's faces of why they don't want to listen or why, why do they want to listen to you. They're looking for an answer about something that is different than the answers that they usually are getting. The problem is, is that when we're in God and we're giving you the same answer, it's because God wants you to know what the answer is and how many times did he have to tell you? As many times as it will take. See, I want to talk about that. Why should you listen to me? I want to talk about that one just for a little bit, but I'm going to lead myself into some other things because I'm actually really talking to the people who are on the fence or unbelievers, amen, the ones who are not exactly sure whether they want to be in Christ or ones who don't believe in God in the first place because there's a lot of people out there who don't believe. They believe in something, but they don't believe in God. They find it hard to, to move in this area because... It's a place where they don't have a lot of control. See, now I, I wanted to tell you about Jesus. I want to talk about Jesus, the one who takes away the sins of the world. I want to tell you about my brother. But I want to tell you about my brother in a, in a certain way. I'm, I want to tell you about him and I want to speak about him in a certain way. So I wanted you to turn the Bibles to Acts, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start at the first verse. I want to talk to you about some believers uh, like myself who believe in Jesus. So, you know, we we have that foundation. We're understanding what Jesus will do for us. And amen. We want to expound to you exactly what it is that Jesus will do for you. But you want to know something? Everybody on this line and everybody connected to us, Jesus has done something totally different for each and every one of us. He's done some same things for us. He saved our souls. He forgave us of some sins and of our sins and of our sins and of our sins. But it's some certain things that he saved you from that he didn't save me from because we weren't there at the same time. And he did some things directly for you. But let us go into the uh, Acts, amen. And uh, if you spend some time with me, amen, glory to God, you'll understand that I'm going I'm to take you someplace. But you know, I'm in the driver's seat, amen, glory to God. So that means I'm driving. Y'all right now, the passenger, you know, I, I done heard from the, I'm the, I'm the co-pilot right now. God is the pilot, amen. I'm the co-pilot. Y'all the passengers, do me a favor. What I'm trying to say to y'all is just this. Don't go out there and try to read all this conversation of what I'm trying to get to you ahead of time, thinking that you're going to get to the knowledge of what I'm trying to understand because just because you read it doesn't mean you're going to get the same knowledge that God has given to me. Now, just hang out with me. I don't know who I was talking to, but I just want you to back it up. Put the brakes on. <laughs> Stop for a second. That's right. Amen. Glory to God. Chapter 1, Acts chapter 4, verse 1. Acts chapter 4, verse 1. I'm reading from... The King James Version. I'm also going to be reading from the English Standard Version today. I'm going to be reading from a few different things today. Amen. Glory to God. And it reads as this. And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temple, and the Sadducees, 
came upon them, being grieved that they had taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Those who understand or don't, maybe you might not. Jesus resurrected from the dead. He got up on the third day. And while he got up upon the third day, amen, glory to God, there's some who did not want it to be preached or known, amen, not because they might not have known, but they did not want to admit their mistake and their understanding of who they thought they were, they might not have been. That was just my own opinion. Maybe they were ignorant to the law, but I doubt it. They studied the scriptures hard and fast so they knew the works of Isaiah so they already knew what it was happening but they just didn't want to see it right there or being told in a certain way that they made a mistake you see they weren't upset they said they were grieved amen they were angry they were saddened now verse 3 and they laid hands on them and put put in hold until the next day, for it is now even time. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men was about five thousand. You see, the word of God is living and active, is sharper than any double-edged sword. It will pierce the divide of the joint and the marrow of the soul and the spirit. If you will allow God to move within you, you will start to see some things happening. Um, there are some individuals out here who don't believe in God, don't believe in anything upon them, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. But I just want you to have an understanding that maybe you need to open up your mindset just a little bit more because I think might might be the problem might not be that you don't believe but i'm gonna leave that for a little bit and it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and annas the high priest and cephas and john and alexander and as many were the kindred of the high priests were gathered together in Jerusalem. And when they had set themselves in the midst, they asked by what power? Mm. Come on now, they asked him by what power? Because they thinking maybe they, they're dealing with something that's witchcraftish because that's what they were trying to get an understanding or trying to push to the people so that they will come back to the understanding of they were right. But God said, he said to him, by what power or by what name have you done this? And then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, I want to tell you something. When you were in God, hallelujah, if you were here from the beginning, you are, uh, if you were here at the beginning of a, a service, amen, when the children were there, there was a certain time when the Pentecost came and the people were filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit caused them to speak in other languages and to do so many things, but God had endowed them with it. And Peter, being filled with the Holy Ghost, said to them, ye rulers of the people, and the elders of Israel. If we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he was made whole, but it is known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified. Amen. Hold on, I want to stop right there. People of God. What's the big deal? They had crucified a man in their mindset that was causing troubles, and they thought that that because then they crucified him that the troubles would go away. They thought that this was going to be the end of a semi little rebellion of people and uh, uh, moving in a certain direction. 
They thought that maybe this will cut down or close down or even start to close the mouth of individuals. But somewhere in the midst of that, amen, when Jesus resurrected, amen, there was a call to look at the books. Glory to God. You have to do study on it. As you won't find it in these 66, you got to go deeper. And in the call to look for those, these books, amen, they were asked a question and they found out and they said that this is what it says about Jesus Christ coming in. They were asked, well, why didn't you know? Amen. So that they're they're in a in a spot right now where it's a little bit too tough for them at this moment. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So as they're doing their things, glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They're letting them know that through the name of Jesus Christ, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. Even by him, this man stands before ye whole. Let me stop there for those that don't know. There was a man that was standing at the gate of beautiful. He had been standing in it, not even standing at the gate. He'd been laying there at the gate for a long time. People had brought him over to the gate every day, but he would beg for arms. He would beg for help and understanding and money and everything of those nature. And he came across Peter and his companion as they were walking and he asked for him and he told him that silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And this man who had been unable to walk for 40 years. Amen. Glory to God. His legs started to straighten up and he got up and he started to leap and he was walking with Peter and them praising God. See, because there's something about the name of Jesus That even though those who don't believe, even in the midst of your non-believing, if you call upon the name of Jesus, he will come to you. Because there's times in your life where you did not believe. Now there's some people out there who believe, but yet don't want to come to him. For some strange reason, they're afraid to leave the stuff that they're doing behind. Invalid option. See that the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, there's things going on all over the place trying to stop me from getting this message through and it's not going to stop me from getting this message through. For all those who can hear me, amen, glory to God, hallelujah. For all those who can hear me, I hope that you can hear me better if you can, amen. Maybe you might have heard me, but maybe you might hear me better. Somebody on Facebook say amen. Glory to God. For those that are out there, amen. I just want to let you know, glory to God, that God was moving in such a special way, glory to God. Glory to the name of Jesus, that he was moving in his special direction, glory to God, trying to do the things that he is trying to do in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. Now, God is moving in a certain way, glory to God, but yet individuals, glory to God, couldn't get by, couldn't get through. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We mag we're magnifying what God and God is saying to them. Listen, I, I've, I've done all the things that I need to do for you. And I'm trying to bring you some particular place. But yet you did not want to believe. There's a lot of unbelievers out there in this world who are not 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 only that they not believe, but but they don't believe the words that were written in the Bible. They have a lot of questions about why are these things happening in the world? But they're questioning God, but what about questioning the people who are in the world? Because if everybody started to put their mind on God, we wouldn't have a lot of the problems that we have right now. I 
I'm going to read this again. It says, And the man that stand here before you was whole. This is the stone which is set not for your builders, which comes before the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other name, in any other, for there is none other name under the heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw that the boldness of Peter and John, and they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They were under the impression of understanding that the Holy Ghost was upon them because they knew that they weren't learned men as they thought they were. But the Holy Ghost can put some stuff into you that even the learned men will marvel at. Because when God you fill you up, he'll fill you up with some things that everybody around you will be astonished at. And it won't be you doing it, but it will be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It will be the others. And for those who are on Facebook, amen, glory to God. I'll let you know, hallelujah, that we're finally, God has finally moved the people around us out the way. And we are on live in a whole nother place as well. So we're going to be live in a few places today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's how good our God is, is that he's able to take the opportunity and go against the oppositions that we have. And even though there's oppositions in every particular place, it definitely continue to go. What I'm trying to tell you, people of God, is what is the big deal? The big deal is this, that we have to keep our mind on Christ. We have to keep our thoughts on God. We have to continue to strengthen in every way possible because guess what? God is just that good. Now for those, hallelujah, that are watching us online on Facebook, amen. Thank you for your patience, amen. But glory to God, hallelujah, we have been allowed to move back into our regular Facebook area, amen, glory to God. But God has just been that good. See, the Bible also tells us that as they found out that Peter and, and, and John and Peter and had perceived they were ignorant men, they had been with them and they believed in, uh, and they knew that their knowledge came from, didn't come from them, but they knew that they had been with Jesus. Because if you're an ignorant man or things of that nature and they say, look, your knowledge is coming from somewhere and they realize that their numbers, knowledge was coming from Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. There's people who have been around you all your life, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Holy Ghost, who have judged you in so many different ways for what you were and for some of the mistakes that you might have made in your past. But they're so caught up in looking at what the yesterday page was that they forgot to turn to the new page. They're so focused on the rerun that they're missing the new episode. They're so focused on what you used to be, they're forgetting who you are. Oh, hope me, Holy Ghost. But the moment uh, that they turn away from the rerun, from the old film, the moment that they lift up their eyes from what they used to be and focus on what is, they won't be able to say anything. 
They'll be able to look at you and understand that you are a totally different creature than you used to be. They might still have the same animosity, hallelujah. They might still have the same issues, glory to God. They might still have the same problems, hallelujah, which ain't, by the way, your problem. It's theirs. But they'll understand that there's something different about you. But when they had commanded them to go outside and counsel, they confirmed among themselves. They said, now I need you to get out while we talk among ourselves, saying, what shall we do to these men? For indeed, a notable miracle had been done by them is manifest to all that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. We can't talk about the, the, the miracle that happened by them right there, and they didn't have to lay hands on nobody. Oh, did I say that? Did I say that, y'all? They didn't have to say hand, lay hands on no particular body, hallelujah, because all they really had to do, glory to God, was to go out there and say what they wanted to say. They spoke the word upon somebody, and it happened. But see, they were so upset about these things that they didn't want it to spread no further, but it says spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. So uh, let's get this right. Let's get this right, Avengers Outlaw. You help me out here. You just heal some people in the name of Jesus. And all the leadership is telling you, because they have seen all the miracles and things that happened, but we don't want that to spread. So we're telling you not to say nothing in that name. Amen. Am I protecting the understanding of the name? Or is it this fact that I just don't want to feel like I was wrong from the beginning when I messed up and got them hung? Mm. Amen. Not understanding that it was already written before I was even born that I was going to be a part of something that I didn't even know I was going to be a part of. Mm. And because their unbelief Versus their status. Yes. Because my status and my unbelief was coinciding with each other and hanging on together. I couldn't see what was in front of me. Amen. There's times in our lives, amen, that we can't even see the forest because of the trees. The trees. Amen. Sometimes you go out there looking for a pen that's sitting right in front of you. Not because the pen didn't move. Not because it wasn't laying there. Because your mindset said, I'm looking elsewhere for the pen. <coughs> Excuse me. And then once you take an opportunity to look further, you'll realize there it was in the first place. Once you took a step back and got an opportunity to not focus in on thinking where it was and just look at where it could be. Mm. Oh, come on, y'all. Amen. So they told him that they want him to not to talk to any more in this name. We don't want you to henceforth to speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus. Come on now. Talk to me, somebody. Amen. E Evangelist Lady Sunshine. 
Amen. I'm sitting over here and I just told you that I don't want you to, to, to preach or to teach in the name of Jesus. That is not happening. Because of the fact that I don't want you to understand that I made a mistake of knowing who he was. Amen. I don't want you to spread that particular thing, but I can't I can't I can't talk about the miracle that you just did. Amen. So I got to save my public self. Ah, uh, that's the, I got to sometimes we 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 got to we got to we got to deal with some things. That no matter whether we're in the public eye, we have to get have that understanding and by other people's things that we're never wrong. But I can tell you right now, I'm wrong a lot of times. Everybody on here could be wrong a lot of times. Amen. We're not Amen. perfect at all. Amen. And neither is anybody Amen. up there. Amen. But yet we'll take the opportunity myself and let you know, I'm sorry, I messed up. Amen. But they didn't want to do that. They said, listen, we want you to stop in that name. Uh -huh. And they threatened them. So I don't know about you, but in the world that I used to come from, if you were to threaten somebody, you either had to back it up or you had to be prepared for what you were getting ready to get into. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think that these cats didn't come in there talking like we're going we gonna to do something and not do it. They had it in their mindset. But they said, we don't want you to speak nor teach in the name of Jesus. I don't want you to teach that because you already put us to the, on, on the pedestal. You already set us up there. You already aired out our dirty laundry. You already told us what we did because you said, hallelujah. You said in verse 10, let it be known to you and to all the people of Israel by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified. You was letting us know right then and there of our problems. We know we did it, but you just gave us more salt in our rooms. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it be right in the right of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. I.e., is it better for me to listen to you or is it better for me to listen to God? Amen. Yeah. If they were talking right, if they were saying something that was of God, they would have been able to discern the fact that that is of God. But they knew that what they were talking about was not of God. And they were saying to themselves, that's not of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. And because they said it's not of God, we're not going to do any of those things. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and have heard. So that means I'm not speaking anything that I don't know. That's what they said. I'm looking at the things that we have done and seen. So when they had further threatened them, that means that they had to put something now. Come on now. There's some people out here in this world who don't believe in God and they don't want to hear the word of God and they don't want you to bring forth the word of God. So they're going to try everything they can do to discredit you from being and saying something about the word of God. What's the big deal? The big deal is the fact that they have a persona that they have to keep up. And if you're in a certain way, 
You can't always tell somebody that you're wrong because people will start to look at you and for some strange reason they'll think that you're weak that you said you're wrong. But some people have the understanding if you're wrong, you're wrong. Why would I lead you in the wrong path? It's like me telling you to go over this hill when I already looked over the hill and know that there's nothing but a cliff, but I'm telling you to go over the hill, everything will be fine. Mm. Why would I lead you or tell you to go someplace where I know that it ain't gonna be right? Because I wasn't right in the first place then. Mm -hmm. Come on. I want to talk with y'all a little bit. What's the big deal? So when they had further threatened him, they let them go, finding nothing how they should might punish them because the people, because of the people, for all men glorify God for that which had been done, for the man was above 40 years old, on whom the miracle of healing was shown. Come on, I'm a, I could take this two ways, amen, glory to God. Hallelujah. I can take this multiple ways, glory to God. But I'm trying to bring you into one place, amen. But I do want to put this out there for the people of God all over the world, amen. The man who got healed was over 40 years old. Some of y'all are still waiting for your miracles. It don't mean that they ain't coming. This man waited for a miracle for over 40 years. Didn't know on the day that he was at the gate that someone who he was asking for arms, or asking for silver and asking for gold, asking for whatever, were going to be the ones to speak the words into him that caused his spirit to heal the body. You never know who or what is going to bring forth your healing, what's going to bring forth your strength, what's going to bring forth your thing. But the one thing you have to have in you is you have to have some belief. See, the Bible tells us that we need to believe in that. So in John, in 1 John, I'm reading from this English Standard Version, amen. It says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, amen. And he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was nothing made that was, that was made. For in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it could not comprehend it not. I the darkness had not overcome it. There's a time in our lives, amen, glory to God, when we're doing so many things, amen, glory to God, that people around us sometimes don't get an understanding of who God is. Because they're looking at all of the terrible things that are going on in our lives. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. They're looking at all the worlds and the wars and the, the famines and all of these things of this nature here. And it was like, God, God, why are all these things, all these things are happening to us? But God said, I gave you instructions on how to do some things. He said, I gave you instructions from the beginning. I told you at a certain time that everybody can come put their stuff together. And at a certain time that you can forgive everybody of their loans. At certain times where you can have all the things open up that everybody will be able to have an equal share. But yet nobody has to do that because the spirit of greed, the spirit of envy, the devil himself, has came down and said to the certain people or some people, and it might be in all people, you don't need to do this. You don't have to share that. Why should you have more than they have? Why should you give from the rich to the poor? 
Because their objects and their mindset is, and if I keep you down, I can keep you down. And I can eliminate you by giving you and feeding you what I want to feed you. I want to give to you. But I know that if you study the word of God, you know that ain't right. That ain't the way that God wanted it to be. And he said, I gave that to you, but yet you made the choices that you made. Amen. See, the people of God, we, 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 we sometimes uh, uh, move around and do some things because we see other people doing it. And so we want to do it, too. Huh. Ain't that how we got our first king? Isn't that what they said? Oh, they got a king over there. We need a king. Uh, God said, oh, you want a king? Okay. But you're going to take everything and be ruled under this king, and now it's ouchie uchi time. Uh, See, there's a lot of people who don't believe in God because God is bringing forth some stuff to them, and they don't want to put it in their wheelhouse because it's not conducive to them see because there's certain people are not in control of certain things they have and, and, and not in control of their their the 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 the, 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 the group is an issue there's certain people out here in this world who don't believe in god period even the demons believe in god because they know they were created by him so if the demons who know that they were created by God believe in God, then how come the people who say they don't believe in God don't know? Because that makes that makes no sense. They don't make no sense. Your mindsets are there. It's not that I, I really believe that the people who tell me that they don't believe in God, it's not that they don't believe in God. They don't believe be of, of something because of something that happened. Uh. So oh, I'm going to get to that too. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all hang out with me today. This is communion day, but I got, I got, I got to get this word out. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the light shined and the darkness had not overcome. I'm reading from the English standard version. And there were men sent from God whose name was John. And he came to bear witness about the light and all might believe through him that he was not the light, but came to bear witness of the light. The true light, which gave light to everyone, was coming into the world, and he was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. Mm. Mm. Come on, y'all. I want to talk to y'all a little bit. What is the big deal? The big deal is Jesus who came out here and not only was at the beginning, but he was in the middle and he's going to be at the end. But yet you still take an opportunity to talk about how you don't believe. But the first thing you do when you hurt yourself is you call on God. Amen. Amen. Well, Jesus. That means that somewhere inside you, that incorruptible seed opened up and hollered for who? The, the creator who created you in the first place. Uh. It hollered out in all that muck and mess that you got there and pointed out and said, there go that one bit of light that even the darkness can't overcome that I could go out there and say, God help me. I done seen the baddest people out here in certain places get shot and call for everything else. But the one thing I always hear them calling out for is God. Amen. And they mama. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. I don't care who you are, how bad you are, how terrible you think you are, how gangster you are. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. But yet you keep talking about your unbelief. Uh -huh. Yet 
You talk about how you escaped out of all these things or how these things got me. I've been shot 20 times and I'm still living. You only living by the grace of God. Amen. That's right. Talk about it. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I don't I didn't had enough of the individuals who are sitting there talking about their unbelief and how how God can, is, is doing these things. What are you doing to help the situation? You're always there's a lot of people out here who talk about, well, God's not doing this. What are you doing? Because God put you on this earth to do something. And then you go criticizing what it is, but you're not doing something. So guess what? When it comes to that time when you're standing before God and he pulls back that film and there's nothing but that, nothing but your criticism and nothing else out there. I guess that is going to be an obstitution of you because you didn't even let Jesus in. So he can't pay for them sins. Even though he's going to work hard to tell you that there's an ounce of something in you. Because even the worst men in the world, hey man, glory to God, hanging up with Christ himself. One of them still didn't want to repent from his sins. He just wanted to be like, okay, you and you just as worse as I am. And the other one said, I, 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 he didn't, man didn't do anything wrong. We deserve it because we did something wrong. But this man didn't do anything wrong. And he turned around and told him, can you remember me when you were in paradise? Can you remember me? You know what he was saying? Lord, I messed up. The big end deal is I didn't let you in. But before I die, I'm letting you in. And Jesus looked at him and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And all his sins was gone. You see, the true light which gives us light to everyone is coming into the world. And he was in the world and the world did not know him. He came into his own and his own people did not receive him. But to all that received him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become what? The children of God. Well, let me ask you a question. If he gave you the right to become the children of God, and it says, for all that believe in his name. So if you're not believing in the name of Jesus, if you're not believing in God, then that means that you're not one of the children of God. Amen. Uh oh. Oh my God! I want to skip. I'm gonna have to. Uh, I want to finish this. Amen. I, I, I hope, hallelujah. I, I got a little bit to go. Amen. Glory to God. This God poured this out in me. I gotta. I gotta get to you. So y'all gotta hang with me. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to preach today. Somebody tell me preach, y'all. Preach. Amen. Glory to God. Hey, man, we're going to preach today. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all are going to help me out today. I need all my people online. Tell me, pray with me, y'all, because we're going to get through this thing today. Amen. Glory to God. And we're going to break some stuff today. Those are those. Oh, my God. I keep hearing it. It's a, old, it's a song, hallelujah, that is out there that is secular. But you know what? I'm going to say it to you right now because every once in a while you'll listen to it. It says, I got some unbelievers out there. When I get finished, if you maybe you might change your mind, maybe you might become a believer or maybe I might have hit a nerve and it got to you and realized that you really, truly believe you just didn't know how to focus it. Amen. Mm. No, Hallelujah. Yes. But to all that have received him and believed in his name, he gave them the right to become the child, the children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Amen. The will of man does some things in it. I'm going to repeat a, a, a West Indian song from Still Pulse. 
It says that man-made laws made man lost. Amen. We, we need to understand that we have to go by the inspiration of what God has for us. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and they have seen his glory, and glory is of the Son, of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness to him and cried out, this is he whom I said, he whom comes after me ranks before me because he has, he was before me. For from the fullness we have received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. But you can't get that if you're not believing. And here's the funny part. God's got it for everybody. But yeah, all you got to do is take the opportunity to believe. But yet some of us are still stuck up in our ways that we don't want to conform to that. It can't be like that. All these things that I got going on, I'm good. Oh, God, I done heard that so many times. I'm good at what I'm doing. Yeah, you still got the same problems. Some of us is going through some issues. Some of us right now might be running to get themselves someplace. And what is the thing that they do? They are usually running to a place where somebody of God is. Hmm. Amen. Amen. Why is it that when people are in trouble, amen, the first people that they come to are the people of God because they put it in their minds that I need to be around somebody holy. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. So that means that somewhere in you, you believe, but yet you're still dysfunctional in your belief. Mm -hmm. It's not that you can't connect the dots. It's the fact that you don't want to. You're so used to living in the area that you're living in that you're understanding that if I move in a certain area, I might be seen as I change. Mm. My Lord. But 10 years ago, you didn't look the same as you look now. And 10 years ago from there, you didn't look the same way you looked then. And 10 years ago, I didn't have all this gray. And 10 years ago, I might have been a different individual. And 10 years ago from there, I might have been a different individual. You go through some changes. So why are you afraid of the change of God? Because you're afraid to let the reins go because you think that you are your own destiny. You believe that you're driving the car. Mm. Well, let me give you a picture of what it's like for you. You're driving a car that ain't nothing but a big wheel. Mm -hmm. So you're actually pedaling as hard as you can and you and, and, and instead of going straight like we tell you, you turn the wheel and you slide. Mm -hmm. When you start to get into the word of God and you start to say, I want to believe in God, God picks you up and puts you in that little red wagon. Mm -hmm. And he'll pull you along. Hallelujah. Until you get to some particular place. He'll teach you how to ride your tricycle, amen, and then bring you to a bike, glory to God. Mm -hmm. And give you enough of everything that you have so that you're able to fight the people around you. Come on, y'all. Amen. 
I'm going to finish this up. Amen. Glory to God. I want y'all to stay with me. Don't fade. Don't fade away from me. Amen. Glory to God. If you, for some strange reason, that you, you got your televisions on, cut them off. Amen. Glory to God. Your radios. Amen. Glory to God. If somebody called you on the phone, hang them up. Tell them that you call back or tell them to get online. Amen. Glory to God. Because the word right here is about to save souls. Amen. And that person might be the soul that needs to be saved. Amen. Amen. And God said, uh, I, 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 I dwell among you. So what's the big deal? Still not convinced that our God will be with you if you call him? Hmm? Second Corinthians tells us this. In their case, Second Corinthians 4 and 4. In their case, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version all the way through, I believe now. In their case, the God, and that small g, of this world has blinded their minds of the unbelievers. Hold on. I want to talk to the people who don't believe. Do you know that the reason that you're not believing is because you let Satan blind you? Uh, the Bible tells you so. But Satan blinds you. He didn't blind your eyes. He blinded your mind. Uh, so now he's messing with your mind for you to be so big, bad, and tough. Yet you allow Satan to mess with your mind. Yeah, I'm going to look you straight in your eyes. You allow Satan to mess with your mind. Uh, 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 uh. And call yourself tough. And being used as a puppet. Mm. Did I say puppet? I ain't mean puppet. I'm more like a muppet or... A man, a man puppet, <laughs> you know, amen, glory to God. And he blinded the mind of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. Wait a minute. The light cannot come overcome. Excuse me. The light overcomes darkness, right? That's what the Bible tells us. Amen. But the only way that darkness can overcome the light is because it has to blind you in your mindset so that you don't even look in that direction. So while you're looking at one place, he got you turning your head over to the left. See, because it says the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, which is the image of God. So if you were able to look at the light and see Christ, you'll know that you're looking at God. Amen. He wants to manifest himself in you. And the funny thing is that he's still right there. But for some strange reason, you can't see him. Is it because you don't want to see him? Are you afraid to see him? Are you scared to see him? Do you think that once you see him, you're going to have some issues and some problems? Hmm? Oh, come on, y'all. I want to talk with y'all a little bit. The Bible tells us once again... that we need to remember the first Corinthians two and 14, the natural person, come on now, help me out evangelist hook. The natural person, that's that, that's that one who, 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 who the natural person, i.e. your fleshy man does not accept the things of the spirit of God. Amen. The spirit man Accepts the things of God. 
because the natural person doesn't accept the things of the spirit of God for they are folly to him. Uh -huh. That means that it means it's silliness to him. There's a lot of us who are in the natural world who are look upon us and say that's silly that I don't believe in none of that because those things can't be. But now I have to let you know that they're silly to you, but yet you're not able to understand them because you're not spiritually discerned. Uh. Your spirit man is in the back burner. So you can't see what you'll see because you didn't allow him to come out. Now I'm daring you to allow him to come out. Let's see if you'll let your spirit man out and let him show you something different. Unless you scared. Hmm. Yeah, I'm talking to you. All those. All of the individuals around us. See, because he will not be able to understand because of their spiritually discerned. But the Bible tells us in Romans 9, 10 and 9, it says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But in order for you to be saved, you got to have what? You got to have some faith. Amen. And what is faith, y'all? It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Let's do this. Um, I want to I want to say something to y'all. Let's say we're having a conversation. I ran across this is a true conversation. This is a conversation that I had with somebody. I had a conversation with somebody because. They were talking to me and I was talking about God and they said that they didn't believe in God. And so I asked them, I said, well, you don't believe in God? And they said, no, I don't believe in God. I said, you don't believe in Jesus? He said, no, I don't believe in Jesus. And I said, okay. And I said, and they, you know, they, they, they're, you know, I don't believe in that. And I said, okay. Well, let me ask you a question. Can I ask you a question? And he looked at me and he said, yeah, go ahead. And I said, well, let's say that you don't believe in God and I believe in God because I do. And, I, and, I, and in my opinion, I believe that he's real. And I continue to believe in God up until the day I pass. And even then, I still believe it. And you don't believe in God at all. And then we get out there and we die. And you realize that I'm right. What would you do? Would it be too late? I think so. See, because there's two places that you can go, heaven and hell. Amen. God don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to go there either. But if you made up your mind and your choice of your unbelief, I bet you it's going to be hotter where you are than I am. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. This man looked at me, caught an attitude in a certain way, but I was like, no, don't be mad. Remember, we were having a conversation. And then he confessed what he really wanted to say, which is what I think a lot of people have a problem with. See, what the big deal is, is that sometimes even in the midst of things, you can confess some things that you don't even know that you got within you. Amen. That he was harboring up some stuff. And then he went to explanation. I'm mad at God. Because my wife died. And because of that, it caused me 
to lose all the things that I have. And as you can tell, I'm homeless. And all the hurt and the pain that he was going through. He put it up against God. And I looked at him and I said, I'm so sorry that you lost your wife. And I'm even sorry that you're going through the pains and the things that you're going through. And I can't help you in some things, but I'm going to try my best to help you as much as I possibly can. And if you will allow me. I said, but the first thing I want to say to you is just this. How can you be mad at God if you don't believe in him? Because I don't believe that anybody could be mad at anything they don't believe in. Amen. And I believe a lot of people who don't believe that's their problem. I asked him that question and he pondered on that question. And then he looked at me. And at that time, I was in Merritt and we were giving out dinners and I was on the corner. I said, come in. Let's have, let me get you, let me get you something to eat. And he came and he ate. And he came quite a few times more. Enough to get his mind right. Enough for him to believe in God. Enough for him to move away the unbelief that he had. Enough for him to allow God to work on his pain and his anger. Sometimes in our lives, we will shut some people down or we'll shut down. We can't let things shut you down, especially when it comes to God. So what's the big deal, y'all? The big deal is that your soul is at stake. Your family and your children are at stake. I'm almost done, y'all. The Bible tells us in Romans 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth, it in your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You tried it your way. Now let's try it God's way. And if you look hard enough, you'll find God. But you got to do something you might not want to. You got to believe. You got to have faith, which is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So you got to have understanding. You got to be able to understand that you got to be able to stay strong, even in the midst of some stuff. You got to say to yourself, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Amen. You got to understand that Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever will draw near to God must believe that he exists. And that his reward those who seek him. You can't come to God and not believe that he doesn't exist. Calling out on a name and believing it in your heart. 
Some of them are saying people have been calling on God for all these years and what has it done for them? But yet, they're in heaven and we're struggling on earth. Hmm. Today, if you have not put your trust in him, hallelujah, I want you to try for a moment, for a minute of time, and I want you to put your trust in him. And I don't want you to put your trust in him for just a moment. I don't want you to put your trust in him for a minute of time. I don't want you to put your trust in him for an hour, but I want you to put your trust in him. It's going to take sacrifice to put your trust in God. We've all always walked in our own ways for some of us, but he said he'll direct our paths. All he wants is a yes from you. You put your trust in him like that one person, you know that will always be there for you. That one person will always be with you, even if that one person is you. See, the Bible tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that he who would ever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. There's a song that said, we have the victory. And then the part of it, it says, he will never let you down. It says, you got the victory, the victory, the victory. Let love abide. I ask you to right now that I want you to take the opportunity to trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your path. If you would take the opportunity to come out of your unbelief and try God, not for an hour, not for a moment, but to try him, really try him, you will see that the deal that he has for you is better than any that is out there already. The deal is he can and will take care of you. All he wants from you is a yes. All he wants from you is a leap of faith. All he wants from you is a leap of faith. All he wants from you is a yes. What's the big deal? The big deal is that if you believe in him, he said that in my father's house, there are many mansions. He says that if it was not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place, I will come again. God has a place for you on earth and in heaven. Remember that someone on this line, somewhere around this world, put it in their mindset that I'm tired of being the surface. Hmm. I'm tired of believing on the back burner. I'm tired of listening to 
individuals tell me about Christ and not activating. I want to try this God for myself and see who he is. The Bible tells us to seek him diligently. Because if you will look for God, while you're looking for him, he'll clean you right on up. Is there anyone on the lines who's desiring? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who is desiring? Glory to God. Is there anyone hmm, on the lines who is desiring to know Christ for themselves? Who wants this to be their time of belief? Who wants to take the opportunity to say, I'm going to do what God has wants me to do? Is there anyone who can do this? Is there anyone who's desiring this? For if you are on the line, hallelujah, what we don't want you to be is we don't want you to be, hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. We don't want you to be the one, hallelujah, who is lost. And thinking about tomorrow and tomorrow doesn't come. If you are a believer, but you fell short, amen. Because we have all fallen short at times. And you say to yourself, I, 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 I need to start again. This is what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to close your eyes and pray with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you first and foremost, Father God, for everything that you have done and everything that you're getting ready to do. We magnify your name. We glorify your name. We exalt your name on high. We give honor and glory to you, Father God, for you alone are worthy of all the honor and praise. Father, we ask you right now, God, that you forgive us, Father God, and try us one more time. Father, we repent right now for everything that we have done. We ask you that you try us anew. Wash us in your blood. Make us white as snow. Try us again, Lord. And Lord, whatever it is that we have done, God, whether we have not moved like we needed to, like we not believed like we should have, not, or we have moved in a direction, God, or even if we just messed up in a way or two. Lord, forgive us right now. God, I thank you for loving us so much. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> For the men and the women of God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you all. For those that are on Facebook, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And for those, hallelujah. Glory to God who are. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And for those, hallelujah, who are our on conference line and for those that are on zoom amen glory to god hallelujah glory to god we will be preparing for our um our um communion amen glory to god hallelujah glory to god Hallelujah. And um, this is what I like to do. I like to um, 
I like to put my uh I like to put uh um evangelist hooks I, I like to you to read um for me the um first Corinthians chapter eleven verses twenty three through thirty four evangelist outlaw if you could read Saint John's thirteen two through seventeen Deacon Steve, I like you to uh, pray for the wine and the and the um, and the juice, the wine and the crackers. Glory to God. Evangelist Lady Sunshine, would you be so kind as to um, at at the very end to do a general prayer for the people? Amen. Glory to God. In that order. Now. Before we take communion, if you have aughts against somebody, break it down into some words that you have. Yeah, I got issues with some people. Right? Amen. Go ahead and get your issues right. Go and tell them the sorry. I'm gonna give you I'll give you a couple of minutes, amen, to do that. Amen. It's twelve forty. Amen. Glory to God. It's 1241, so amen. By 1244, amen, you can tell somebody you're sorry. And hey, come back, amen. Don't have a long conversation. Just tell them I'm sorry. I love you and get back online. For those who don't have the crackers and the juice, amen. Glory to God that's here, amen. For those on Facebook, you can see this thing. For those that are on Zoom, you can see that as well. Amen. If you don't have one, get in touch with us. Amen. At word of the lamb at outlook.com. Send us an email. We will talk with you about how to do that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And while you're sitting there thinking about it and making it and making your list, if your list is long, y'all. Right, Evangelist Hooks? Yes. If they li- if they, if they got a long list, they they need to take communion when. Next time. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Because if your list is that long, you got a lot of people to talk to. Go ahead and take care of them people. Amen. Glory to God. I'll give you a couple two more minutes. Amen. In the midst of that, Amen. Glory to God. If there's anybody on this line, right? Amen. At the end of services, if you're desiring that you would like us to to um, to uh, uh, you like to have prayer, Amen. Glory to God. We will have our um, we'll have our um, our conference line open, Amen. As well, glory to God that you can you can you can call into, and um, I will we'll give you that number, Amen. Glory to God. And um, that number is one. What uh, I believe that number is uh, uh, one. Um, is it two o two? Hallelujah. Please go to two zero two eleven ten. Thank you very much for that. And you repeat that for him again for him, please. One eight hundred. Three zero two, two zero two zero two, eleven ten. Okay. We're gonna repeat that just for the others in the other social media. Yes. That yeah. we are connected to the number is area code three zero two mm-hmm, mm-hmm. two zero two one 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 zero. All right. Again, Three zero two two zero two one 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 zero, and the code is nine four zero seven nine two. Perfect. The code is nine four zero seven nine two. Amen. And we're going to use that number, Amen, for anybody who's desiring to have prayer. Amen. After service, amen. Glory to God. We'll be here to pray for you afterwards. And we're going to mention that one more time before we leave. And that's going to be um, Evangelist Lady Sunshine. I'll mention that again at the, right at the end at, after our um, her general prayer, praying for everybody. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Evangelist Hooks and Evangelist Lady Sunshine. Amen. Glory to God. I appreciate both of you. Thank you so much. Um, are we... 
Are we all? Uh, uh, it's it's twelve forty four. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we're turning to our our pages. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And glory to God. We'll be reading some St. John's first. Amen. Glory to God. Is that you, Evangelist? Okay, amen. Go, amen. It's all you. The reading is coming um, this afternoon from St. John chapter 13, verses 2 through 17. And it reads as, And supper being ended, and the devil having now put into the heart of Judah, Issachar, Simon's son, mm -hmm. to betray him, mm -hmm. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God. He risen from support, he risen from supper, and laid aside his garment, and took a towel and gritted himself. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel where within he was gritted. Then come he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt not hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet, Jesus answered him. If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He that wash need not save to wash his feet, but is clean ever with and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and was set down again, he said unto them, know what I have done to you. Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happily are ye if ye do them. Amen. That was the reading of St. John chapter 13, verse um, 2 through 7. Amen. 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 Thank you. Wonderful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Evangelist Hooks. Glory to God. Now we read it from First Corinthians chapter eleven, verses twenty-three through thirty-four. And it reads as such. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to pray. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After that same manner, also he took the cup. When he had sucked, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. Do this do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, we do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and go let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chasing of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order yes. when I come. And this adds a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's divine word. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Brothers, bro, brother Steve. Father God. <clears throat> Father God, we come to you and asking you to bless those that commune with us this evening, Father, in the name of Jesus. Continue to watch over them as we this is our brother, Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. Juice and box on this communion morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. For those that are getting ready for us, amen. As you notice that it has been already been blessed. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But if you have a cup, hallelujah, and we, and we have it like this for those that don't don't know, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, glory to God. For those that don't know, amen, glory to God. We have this little juice cup right here. There's a cellophane piece right at the top. Amen. Take this, remove the cellophane piece first, amen. Glory for God, that will, 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 will expose the cracker, amen. And then, it, and then you can open up the juice as you want to. And amen, I'm reading from Luke, the, the, the 22nd chapter verses 19 through 20 and he took the bread and he gave things and he break it and he gave it to him and said this is my body which is given to you do this in remembrance of me eat all of it the body of christ in a light wise manner also he had the cup and said this is my this is a cup in my in the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you. Drink ye all of it, the blood of Christ. Amen. And they said that after they had supped and did these things that they had got up and they sung a song as they came on their way out. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, oh, the blood has signed my name, oh, the blood, Jesus' blood, oh, the blood done signed name, oh, the blood. Jesus' blood, oh, the blood done sign my name, oh, the blood done sign my name. Hallelujah. Glory to 
of God. We give this to Evangelist Lady Sunshine. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you that you have blessed us to remember the sacrifice of what you've done. You redeemed us. You paid the price for us, oh God. Father, in the heavenly name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and we ask you to shield every prayer, oh God. Be the answer that we all seek, oh God. Give us a thirst for your righteousness, oh God. Father, and as the brook pants for the water, that we would pant after the things of you. Deliver us, O God, and set us free, O God, in every way, O God, that we would chase after you freely, Father God, and walk into the divine assignment that you have for each and every one of us for the body of Christ is one. Father, we ask you that you bless everyone in this home and everyone connected to us. Yes. That you bless the ministries, oh God, that worship you in spirit and in truth, Jesus. Father God. That soul will cry out, what must I do to be saved? Father, that you would be the loudest, still, small voice in their head and their heart, oh God. In the name of Jesus, give them an experience, oh God, my Savior, that they will forever be transformed and continue, oh God, to create in each and, of, each and every one of us a clean heart and renew a right spirit yes. and transform the spirit of our mind, Father God, in the name of Jesus. With your word and through your word, loving God, we bless you. Bless we you. exalt you and we thank you for the honor and the privilege just to bless your name. Father, we sing praises to you of hallelujah, King of kings and Lord of lords. For you indeed are the great I am that I am. And we bless you today. And we thank you for every breath of life that you've gifted us, Father God. In Jesus' name we all pray and let the church say, Amen. 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 Glory to God. And if you'd be so kind as to remind him one more time, if we're there for prayer, Amen. Amen. For those of you who would like prayer, please visit us now and call the number on our teleconference line. It is 320-202-1110. Again, the number is 302-202-1110. The code is 9402-92. Again, nine four zero seven nine two. I will repeat that. The code is nine four zero seven nine two. And we welcome each and every one of you. And we would love to pray for you. We have evangelists on the line. We have evangelist hooks, evangelist outlaw. We have our beloved deacon and deaconess on the line. And we have our own angel and shepherd over this house of Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries our own beloved Pastor Brian. Come on out and get on the teleconference line now. We'll pray for you because we believe in prayer because God inclines his ears to us. Yes. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. For those that are on Facebook, hallelujah, glory to God, hallelujah. For it to be a, a hiccup in some places, amen. We're broadcasting to two parts of Facebook, amen, today, hallelujah. And it, 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 what, 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 what meant to be for, for our bad turned out to be for our good. So we're actually broadcasting live in a few different places now, amen, glory to God. But we, we invite you to come and be with us and amen, glory to God. For those that are on the line, amen, you have the number on there and it'll be on there for a little bit through, um, our Facebook page, Amen. Glory to God. And what we're gonna do right now is Hallelujah. We're we're going to um we're going to be um just telling you if you like to come come upon our, our line. All the people who are on Zoom will be on here. We'll be waiting for you for a little bit. Amen. Glory to God. And um for those that are on Facebook Live, we love you. We we God bless each and every one of you. And we thank you for for everything that you have done. Amen. For for the ones that are going directly from one particular place, amen, we, got, we, we bless your holy name, amen, glory to God.